Hello everyone. I'd like to thank you for joining us today for today's sermon from Praise Assembly of God here at 89 Congress Street. Hope you enjoy this message and if you have any feedback you'd like to offer feel free to give me a call at 207-364-3856 or my cell phone 207-357-4748. Again, enjoy today's message. Thanks. If everything works properly at 11 o'clock. But this is, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Daniel 9, beginning with the first verse. In the first year of Darius, the son of Aphosaurus, the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him, with those who keep his commandments, we have sinned and committed inequity. We have done wickedly and rebelled and by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Neither have you heeded your servants, the prophets. We spoke in your name to our kings and our princes, to our fathers and all the people of the land. O oh Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us shame of face as it is this day to men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all of Israel, those near and those far off and all countries to which you have written them because of their unfaithfulness which they have committed against you. O oh Lord, to us belongs the shame of the face to our kings, our princes, our fathers, because they have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness even though, I'm sorry, though we have rebelled against him, we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Church, over the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to get real serious with God before we get into a time of celebration of the ten churches that are opening, and all ten of them, especially Oxford, is going to need prayer. We're, we're, we're going to need to reach heaven, not only here locally, but as well as our brothers and sisters across the great northern New England district of Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. But let's jump in a time machine 2,600 years, and let's go back to the prophet Daniel, as Daniel was praying for his people. Some people, prayer doesn't shake them much. Some people, prayer doesn't move them at all. Some people, you know, prayer is just, it's just another thing. Well, not to Daniel. It was Daniel's way of life. Prayer was the foundation of getting out of bed. Prayer was like Daniel's breakfast. You know, prayer was the most important thing Daniel did all day was to reach heaven and to see God move his mighty hand. But Daniel, when he prayed, he prayed with honesty and integrity. He was not in denial. Church, let me tell you something. I'm not in denial either. Jesus Christ is coming soon, and for many people, their lives are falling apart. For many people, they're not sure where to go next. Everything appears to be crumbling. You know, we're having folks with mental health issues, physical issues, financial issues, all types of things, and not just here in praise, but in our community. We need to understand and believe that there is power in prayer. I was so blessed. I asked the ladies a question yesterday I was praying with, and I wanted to see what their answer would be. And I would say, I told them, I said, ladies, you, you ladies are such a blessing to me. You're a sight for sore eyes. You are, this just has encouraged me today, which I needed to be encouraged, that there are people that believe in the power of prayer and actually live it. And I said to them, I said, ladies, what is the secret? And one of the ladies, she said this, we just simply believe. We just believe. Remember that old song? All things are possible if we only believe. Church, let me tell you. If there was ever a time we needed to utilize the new wing of this altar here is today. If there was ever a time we needed to use a Kleenex if need be, it is today, if not for yourself, interceding for someone else, standing in the need of prayer. 
And church, I believe fully that Daniel understood this. And as he sat down, you know, at the beginning of King Darius' reign, this is right after King Darius who had came in and killed, if you will, Belshazzar, and you have the changing of the guard from the Persians and Medes, you know, taking over the Babylonian people, as King David had predicted that they would only, I'm sorry, the prophet Daniel had predicted that Babylon would reign for 70 years, and, and, and the Daniel had predicted even that very night to Belshazzar that you're going to be captured tonight and killed and overthrown as, the, as Daniel interpreted the handwriting on the wall. People ask all the time, how did he do that? Because he reached heaven through prayer. How did the supernatural, how did he interpret dreams? How did his prophecy come to life? How did he have the faith to endure? Think about this. Daniel was in good. He had a relationship with Nebuchadnezzar. He had a relationship with Belshazzar. He had a relationship with the King Cyrus. He had a relationship with King Darius. I mean, think about this. This guy is kind of like the Billy Graham who had a relationship with every president all the way back to Harry Truman. Think about that. Daniel was in tight, and God used Daniel. How did God use Daniel? Yes, he was a man of faith. Yes, but more importantly, he was a man of prayer who knew how to reach heaven. Cried out to God. Declared those prayers. Audibilized them. Interceded. Stood in the gap. And I believe church fully that, that God trusted Daniel. God trusted Daniel not only to speak to God, but he trusted God, more importantly, to listen to what God had to say to him. And by listening, he would be obedient. That's reaching heaven. That's reaching heaven, church. I told Pastor Roland yesterday, I said, Brother, the secret, if you want to know, and I'll tell anybody this, to what God, why we're having a dedication service next week, why we're having 31 years. Why the church is in downtown Rumford. Let me tell you what I believe is moving God's hand. The whole time has been reaching heaven through prayer. And if nobody else was here, it was Mary and I reaching heaven through prayer. Last night we were a little worried. You know, reaching heaven through prayer. People want to know what's going on. It's through the power of prayer. I said, brother, the last thing that you ever give up is missions. Don't, don't stop supporting missions. And number two, make sure you're leading from your knees. I believe that fully. The question is, do you? Guys, let me ask you a question. I haven't asked it to you since men's group a while back, and that question is this. Are you leading your home from your knees? Through prayer. Reaching heaven through prayer. Here, Dan, Let's look at Daniel's prayer, beginning with verse 3. Then I set my face toward the Lord to make requests by prayer and supplication. With fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. People often wonder, what was there? Daniel praying in Daniel 6? What, what kind of prayers was he offering before he was thrown into the lion's den for praying? Well, here's proof of what some of the things he was praying. Some of the things he was praying is he's praying before the Lord. With fasting, with sackcloth, or intercession, with ashes. Daniel was getting into intense prayer. He wasn't just setting, a long, setting aside five minutes somewhere, if that. You know, he wasn't just setting aside a 30-second prayer after you read your daily bread in the morning. He was getting into intense prayer via fasting and ashes and sackcloth. And, and, and that, that simply means intense prayer that, that Daniel was doing sacrificially. He was going out of his way to reach heaven for God. And this is what he prayed, verse 4. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession and said. So how did he open his prayer? He opened his prayer with repentance. He opened his prayer with, Lord, you know what? We, I am sorry. Lord, I confess to you, O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. Here is, here is David making confession, and he's bringing an attitude of repentance through what? Through worship. How can you reach heaven in your prayer time? Begin to worship the Lord and find something awesome begin happening. Daniel knew that God was going to keep his promises. He was going to keep his covenants. Daniel knew that there was power in prayer, yes, but Daniel knew that God in His sovereignty would only bless those who listened and obeyed His commandments. You know, church, I finally realized last night in prayer meeting why some people can't build the discipline for prayer for more than 30 seconds. It's not because they got ADHD. It's not because they, they've got ADHD. 
It's not, or ADD. It's not because they don't have the discipline. Let me tell you what it is. It's because people know when they start getting up close to God, and they, God's going to start speaking back, and that means we've got to get our house in order. That means, hey, we're going to the Lord with, with confession. He's sovereign to, you know, we're going. And so rather than hear God, it's kind of like the kid who knows they're going to get in trouble if they just fess up to mom or dad that they took the 20 bucks out of the wallet or purse and they just kind of shuck and jive, buying themselves a little time. Well, Daniel knew that if he was going to reach heaven, he had to come with a clean heart. He had to come with an attitude of worship. He, had to, he was going into the, the holy of holies of God. Church, take a page from Daniel's book here. As he is praying, he's giving worship to the Lord. He's talking about the mercy of God. He's talking about those who love and keep His commandments. We talked about love with the, the opening devotion that Pastor Vince and Tracy shared here today. You know, and the importance of the love of God and the love of thy neighbor. And here is, Dan, here is Daniel bringing love to the Lord. Verse 5, he says, we have sinned and committed inequity. Notice Daniel here says, we. He does not say they. Daniel, who had been faithful by this time for over 40 years, but he includes himself in the one who were sinning against God, the people of Israel. And he says, we. Church, the next time you begin praying for the River Valley, why don't you start saying we, like, like, you're, like you live here and you don't pay taxes here or live in the River Valley and just kind of exclude yourself. Let me tell you something, church. God's called us here, and it is we. Yesterday when my phone was ringing and text was going off and buzzing all day, all day long, literally all day long, one of the ladies looked at me and said, what is going on? Do you need to take that? I said, no, we're reaching heaven in here. They know where I am. Because I've been telling everybody where I was going to be yesterday. I've been, hopefully they were praying for us. They couldn't be there. Please be praying for us. We need to reach heaven right here. You know? And, and this type of thing. But church, I, I, was, I was sitting there yesterday and I'm thinking, Lord, let me get real bold. Let me get real serious. If we believe, we'll pray. Daniel, as he, as he was praying here in verse 5, he comes right out and says, hey, we have sinned. Yesterday, I felt like I was in that marital problem. I felt like yesterday, man, I, I, my heart is aching. My heart is aching because, you know, folks are in such physical pain. My heart is aching because that addiction has, has taken over someone's life to a pain man. My heart was aching. Daniel, he grieved with the Israelites, which motivated him to reach heaven so they could get out of that bondage. Not only they, but he, he could get out of that place of despair. Church, my heart grieved yesterday, last week after church. Especially once I found out who it was that was up there. That's, that's, a, very, uh, that's a very grieving thing. Daniel says, we have sinned and committed inequity. We have done wickedly and rebelled even by departing your precepts and your judgments. Daniel was faithful, but he said he's just as guilty. Church, that's the power of interceding for prayer on behalf of others. You remember that you're not too good for anybody. We're the body of Christ. If one brother's hurt, I'm hurt. If one sister's hurt, I'm hurt. I tell you what, when Hannah and I rolled in that nursing home, and you should have saw Laura's face light up. She was in horrific pain. She was kind of bent over because they had just moved her, and they weren't allowed to give her pain meds until the, once you go into a nursing home, you've got to switch everything over to them, and you've got to get a doctor on board, and it's just, they've got to use their own pills. Even if you have some, you've got to, you've got to wait for them to bring their own, which wasn't coming in until the truck at 11 o'clock at night. A pharmacy delivers at 11 o'clock at night. I don't know how that works, but... She was in great pain, but she came, I came in and I said, hi, Miss Laura and Hannah. Almost as soon as I said that, she, you know, she said a few things, kind of like she's doing right now. Laura recognized my voice, but as soon as she saw that little girl, God came into that room. One, she knew she wasn't forgotten. But two, Pastor, we need prayer. I said, Miss Laura, Let's reach heaven right now. Maybe you can't get a pill till midnight, but we can go to Jesus right now. Hannah and I stayed there about an hour. And I tell you what, you wouldn't have known Laura was in any pain. 
The power of God is so awesome. But the, she said, Pastor, why would you come down here? I said, Lord, I knew you were hurting. Therefore, I'm hurting. That's how you got to start looking at things, church, if you want to reach heaven. You shift from self to others. That's what Daniel's doing here. Daniel, well, Daniel was faithful. And he's saying, we have sinned. He's bringing himself into that peace. Don't sit there and belittle the river valley for what's going on around us. Say, you know what? I live here too. So it is we that are falling from God. The United States of America, it is we. Well, I didn't vote for him. I'm not living that way. It don't matter. You're an American. It is we that is falling apart from God, which means we need to reach heaven now for the United States. Well, Pastor, there's a ball game. Well, the Orioles and Red Sox are out of it. So what are you watching? The pigskin is now taking over. It's football. Always going to be something. It's vacation time. It's beautiful weather. It's always going to be something. And you'll never reach heaven. Because next thing, it's going to be the holidays. Or the fair season. Pastor, it's the Farmington Fair. It's the Freiburg Fair. This only comes once a year. It's always going to be something until you develop the commission to reach heaven. To reach heaven. Daniel was reaching heaven. And he believed very much he was part of the wickedness that was bringing God's judgment to the nation of Israel. Verse 7, O Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us shame of face. It is this day to the men of Judah, to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, all of Israel, those near and those far, off in the, all countries to which you have driven them because of the unfaithfulness which they have committed against you. Daniel fully is understanding that there is unfaithfulness that's taking place. Daniel is fully understanding the judgment of God. Daniel's not sitting there trying to change God's mind about what God did. Daniel's accepting that there is judgment coming again that, against them and Daniel is going to intercede for them that they change and repent of their sin. Unfortunately, they wouldn't listen to Daniel. And as we learned today, Israel was in captivity for 2,800 years. People say all the time, well, where's God's servants? What God's servants doing? What were God's do servants doing then? Even if it's just a few of God's servants now or a few of God's servants then, the people still have a free will choice. You have a free will choice to reach heaven through prayer. You have a free will choice. I can't make you. God will, God, he's going to give you the free will choice to pray or not. I ask our students at the school every day, have you already been in, have you already been in, uh, in prayer before God? Have you spent any time with Him in prayer? Prayer is more than just a two-second prayer when we open the school day. Communicating with God, talking to God. We want to train our young people to learn how to pray now. So that then when they become adults, they have a prayer life. That they can reach heaven. Even now as teenagers. Verse number 8, O Lord, to us belongs shame, a face to our gods, our princes, our fathers, because we have sinned against you. Again, Daniel writes, we have sinned against you, and therefore the shame of God. But Daniel still believed in the power of prayer. Daniel could have every excuse not to pray. And in fact, Daniel's praying right now, knowing that if he gets caught, he's going to get locked up in a lion's den. That's what's going on in Daniel's mind. You say, Pastor, how do you know that? Because verse 1 tells us the year of King Darius. The early year of King Darius. We know it was in the same period. It, we don't know if this was the specific prayer. He was praying when the governors found him in there praying. But it was the same time period. Daniel knew he was going to get thrown into a lion's den. But did that stop him? No. Church, it's not going to break your back or break your leg to get down here on your knees and pray. If you need help getting up, we're ready to help you. It's not going to break your back to bow your head and, and reach heaven. It's not, going to, it's not going to give you a sore throat to pray out to God. We have no problem screaming when the guy drops the ball in the end zone. Or no problem screaming when the guy misses the field goal. He shanks it wide left or wide right. Especially if it's two or three times during the same game. But there's some screaming going on in that house. We can reach heaven too. Through prayer. Daniel knew how to reach heaven. Guys, I want to close with this. We're going to stop right there. Brandon, you can, you can shift over so that it gives me an idea 
as we get closer. We're going to have prayer time after worship today. Yeah, they're zooming in there, brother, so it's 11, so you'll hear them doing some preliminary things right now, matter of fact. So you can blow that up and kill the lights. Yeah, you can kill the lights. Now, yesterday, one of the men that we're going to hear from, our assistant superintendent, that may be him there, I can't tell you until they dim the lights. But Pastor Dan Avatello come to me. Pastor Dan, he went to um, let him know verse uh, light nine too. We'll have to go off to the. Um, he went. Him and his wife Angela went to each of the main churches. Hello. Thanks for watching today's message. Appreciate you taking the time to listen to each word of God as shared here today. I'd also like to take this time to invite you to our weekly services: Sunday school for all ages at 9 a.m. Worship at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. with Children's Church at 10 a.m. Also, we have a special men's and women's group at 5 p.m. on Sundays. During the week, we have several services as well. We have an extra innings class with me, Pastor Justin, on Tuesdays at 10. Uh, also, uh, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m., we have a special class on Israel and the Book of Acts. Wednesday, we have a love and respect class for married couples at 10 a.m., also, on Wednesday night, we have our family night for all ages at 6.30 p.m. And lastly, we have our food pantry on Thursdays with servings at both 10 and 11 a.m. May God richly bless you today. Thanks again for watching.